Should I start? Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. Go ahead, go ahead. Wait. Welcome to the third episode of My Grandma Also Know, where we learn facts about body and our organs, and also debunk some myths. I am Rijo, yes, I'm your host again, and today we have Dr. Davinder Singh, Senior Consultant Cardiologist from Cadence Heart Centre. Let's welcome Dr. Singh. Yeah, hi. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year too. As usual, before we begin, could you tell us a bit more about yourself? Yeah, hi. I am Devinder. I am cardiologist and my subspecialty is cardiac electrophysiology or in simple term, you can call me uh, electrician of the heart. First question for you. As an electrophysiologist, so you say it's an electrician, right? What do you deal with on a daily basis? I look after patients who have heart rhythm problem. It could be fast heartbeat or it could be slow heartbeat. It can present as palpitation, loss of consciousness, discomfort, chest pain. So anything that is to do with heart rhythm. So next, um, you know out of curiosity, there are many... Okay, something visual. Oh, oh, okay. Ta-da! Challenge! Okay. okay, let's see what's the challenge. Keep your answers within 30 seconds or you will have to do a forfeit. I think this is quite interesting. So you, you, you mentioned like heart rhythm, you deal with heart rhythm um, disorder. So who are these people that are at risk? Yeah, so that's a good question. Although heartbeat problem can range from age-wise from very young to really elderly, mm. but the spectrum is very wide. But the problem that occurs in younger patients may be different from that occurs in elderly. So a rhythm problem like atrial fibrillation where the heartbeat is very disorganized, irregular and fast is more common in elderly. And a rhythm problem like a supraventricular tachycardia or SVT which is regular fast heartbeat occurs more in younger individuals. Congratulations, <laughs> oh celebration. Okay, for seconds up. Okay, you got there. a there. There, so what are we daring? Okay, we got something yum yum. Piece of yum yum in the tum tum. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's my dare, not bad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a spicy chip, I think can show the chip. Wow. It? It's Nacho. spicy, like, 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 there's a skull here. Wow. Potent. I think truth would have, truth would have been better actually. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is hot. <laughs> Oh, that's hot. That's hot. You need water? <clears throat> no, it's okay. Because grandma is pretty old now, so you know when should she be worried about heart palpitation? You know when's the signal that you know she needs to go see a doctor? I think everybody after forties should do a yearly health screening and get the ECG done yearly. And in that way, we can pick up heart rhythm problem even before they start feeling symptoms. But in elderly, if they want to be more cautious, they can even have six monthly ECGs as well. Since just now you mentioned, you know, there are different kinds of heart palpitations. I just want to know, like, what are the most common kind, and you know, how do one know that you know he or she has it? Uh, that's a good question too. <laughs> and uh, the palpitation means feeling of heart racing or heart beating fast. And if you just tell patient how does he feel, you, he can just tap and tell if it is regular fast heartbeat or if it is irregular fast heartbeat. Irregular fast heartbeat points towards atrial fibrillation and regular fast heartbeat points towards organized fast heartbeat which could be a supraventricular tachycardia. What do you as a doctor do to resolve some of these heart palpitations? There are many ways we can treat heart rhythm problem. Apart from medication, we have now very good procedures to look after patient with heart rhythm problem. One of them is called radiofrequency ablation. It's a minimally invasive procedure where we go into the heart through the veins and we localize where the rhythm problem is coming from and once we localize that we just heat up a small part of the heart tissue causing this rhythm problem with radiofrequency current and can potentially cure this problem. So just now you mentioned that one kind of treatment will be burning small parts of uh, tissues of the heart. Mm -hmm. So what is the success rate compared to medication? Again a very good question. It depends on what kind of rhythm problem you are treating. A, a rhythm problem like supraventricular tachycardia, the success rate of radiofrequency ablation is almost 95% or more. 
But if we talk about atrial fibrillation, the success rate of radio frequency ablation is about 80 and above. Sounds like, can we skip medication and go straight? Uh, yeah, it is an option, especially because the efficacy of medication is much lower in atrial fibrillation. It's less than 50%. So if we compare medication versus ablation, definitely ablation has a better success rate. So I think people of grandma's age uh, usually they have a device. Is it called a pacemaker? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what is a pacemaker? Okay, uh, pacemaker is a tiny electronic device mm -hmm. which is implanted under the skin with wires going into the heart that keeps gives electrical signal to the heart and it is used to treat rhythm problem when the heartbeat is too slow. The device becomes your pacemaker or your rhythm. For such people, if they want to get their heart checked or if they have something that they want to get checked, they have to go through an MRI. Are they able to do so? Uh, yes. So most of the devices we do mm. now are MRI safe or compatible, but the device do require programming before and after the MRI. The patient has to see us before and after the device, uh, cardiac MRI. For my own knowledge, if you have a pacemaker, you know, you walk through the airport scan, does it beep? Yes because it's metal so it will be detected as metal in your body but it may not affect the device function and all pacemaker patients carry a card stating that they have a device implanted inside their body so it's not a problem going through a metal detector MRI you know then how about if patient wants to go for ultrasound does it affect oh ultrasound no problem CT scan also not a problem x-rays not an issue. I'm asking on behalf of grandma's friend, okay? So, can grandma friends still exercise with a pacemaker? Yeah, no issues. A uh, pacemaker patient can lead a normal life. Mm -hmm. They can mm -hmm. exercise, run, jog, depending on their physical fitness. Okay, I'm happy for Uncle Roger. For Uncle Roger maybe. I think it's Uncle Roger. Does he tell his dentist if he has a pacemaker? Does he have to tell his dentist? Yes, he do have to tell dentist because sometimes dentist uses electrocautery which is used to stop bleeding during the procedure and that can sometimes interfere with the device function. Uh, so it is better to inform your dentist that you have a pacemaker before you go for dental procedures. Grandma always asks very strange questions. Okay, please yeah. go grandma, ahead. grandma is asking whether, I don't know, is she going to a jungle or something? She's asking do pacemaker need to be charged like phones? Well, I think it's still a relevant question which a lot of patients ask me. Pacemaker has an inbuilt battery which can last for 10 to 12 years. Mm. So after about 10 to 12 years, we do change the device. Is it difficult to change the device? It's not mm. difficult. Uh -huh. uh, it is a very straightforward procedure mm. and it takes about less than an hour to change device. We always walk around uh, the void deck and we notice there's this thing called the AED, you know, with a heart and a lightning, right? And sometimes at shopping places as well. So what is the purpose exactly? AED is basically a defibrillator. It is part of cardiopulmonary resuscitation or CPR. It can be used in patients who have suddenly collapsed and require resuscitation. So it's a life-saving equipment. So just now you mentioned if someone passed out, so is it all the case when someone passed out, you can use an AED? Oh, no, you have to be CPR trained to use AED because you have to make sure that patient is not breathing and his heart has stopped. Once you start CPR, if you follow protocol, there'll be a point where you have to use AED. Okay, okay, means as a lay... You can't just anyhow put oh. an AED on anybody who has lost consciousness because his heart may be still beating. If I can't use it, person who is trained in CPR, can use it? Can use it and they will know how to use it. Yes. So I want to know how to use it, though I'm not trained to use it. So I, I mean, I, think I just want to know for my knowledge. Oh, so yeah, so you can actually learn CPR. Okay. And you can be a layman who is basically a CPR trained. Mm. And then you can use AED actually, effectively. Okay. So I think, uh, have a look how does a CAED look like. I can show you different component of the AED. Oh, okay, great. Let's go. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe to us and comment below to let us know which organ you would like to find out next. Thank you so much for watching.